Happy Tuesday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's lead off morning note. If you would like the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what to specifically do about them in your portfolio, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So today's key macro event is the BOJ holds Beijing mole stimulus and the probability of a soft landing continues to inch higher in the U.S. Dot, dot, dot. Yet crypto doesn't care. The nuance is uh, today's BOJ meeting came and went without much fanfare, supporting the bearish VAMs global fixed income volatility regime contributing to Goldilocks. Elsewhere, Chinese authorities are considering a $278 billion rescue package for their flailing, flailing stock market. And in the U.S., the probability of a soft landing continues to inch higher, as most recently confirmed by the conference board leading index uh, and coincident economic index data. Um, market implications. Uh, the sell-off in crypto is accelerating at Bitcoin down 2% day over day, down 11% month over month. You got Ethereum down 5% day over day and down 11% week to date. Uh, and the sell-off may be an indication that the global liquidity impulse is turning negative. Uh, if confirmed, that dynamic would contribute to a row row phase transition in the top-down market regime because global liquidity is currently the dominant driver of the S&P 500 on a trending basis, according to our positioning model. Refer to our uh, January 19th and January 22nd leadoff morning notes for a detailed discussion on the gauntlet of key macro catalysts that risk upending Goldilocks over the next few weeks. Transitioning to uh, my 42 macro dashboard here, uh, we'll start with our, uh, our macros, our trading range signals from our friends uh, over at Longbow. We're getting an overbought uh, condition uh, in in, ba in, agri in sort of ba or sorry agricultural commodities uh, DBA. Uh, we're also getting a, a near overbought condition in base metals uh, as well. So be aware of that you're getting kind of an anti Goldilocks flavoring here uh, in asset markets. Uh, we're getting a Shanghai Compi or sorry, uh, overbought uh, signal in the Russell 2000 here. Uh, I think we had an overbought signal in ES1, but it's, it's backing off a little bit, backed off a little bit this morning uh, from that overbought condition there uh, in, uh, in the S&P 500. Shanghai Composite continues to be deeply, deeply under oversold. And again, $278 billion is a big, that's a big package to come buy stocks. Uh, what they're effectively trying to do, the uh, Beijing, they're considering uh, a, a targeting overseas retained earnings for, for Chinese uh, corporations uh, and funneling through the Hong Kong Stock Exchange Connect, which would obviously be supportive for the CNH, the offshore yuan as well, which has historically been a positive risk factor for Chinese equities, Chinese assets. So uh, we'll see if they implement that. It will obviously cause a transitory bounce in, in Chinese equities. But this is, this, in our opinion, you're not going to see a sustained recovery in Chinese assets until you see IA, one of two things, material counter cyclical fiscal stimulus, fiscal monetary stimulus, mostly fiscal because we've seen enough monetary and it's obviously not working because China reopened to the structural liquidity trap that we called out uh, last February uh, and then, um, or sorry, last January and February. Uh, and then, or number two, uh, they pursue structural reforms, which seem very unlikely given that the only structural reforms that China really uh, needs to pursue and, and would actually have a material impact on the Chinese economy in terms of rebalancing growth is siphoning income away from state-owned enterprises and local governments and into the household sector, which seems very unlikely given that the Chinese Communist Party continues to run the ship over in Beijing or over in mainland China. Uh, and then uh, last, I think we had another, oh, sorry, we had an oversold signal uh, in Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum as well. Uh, so obviously, uh, you know, the self and crypto is accelerating. Uh, it's still oversold. The range is widening uh, down there. So that's something you'd be a very, uh, I wouldn't say very concerned about, but you definitely need to be concerned about that because typically what happens when those ranges are widening, it's, it can be a phase a indication of a phase transition in the momentum from a medium term standpoint. Uh, obviously, momentum is still bullish for both uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum on a medium term basis. Transitioning to our 42 macro aware community, uh, we had a question here from a new uh, subscriber. Uh, it reads, uh, uh, what would your recommendation be to someone who is starting to use the KISS portfolio? Uh, would you buy all the positions right away or wait for a transition? Uh, my answer to that, obviously, there's no right answer in terms of you know how to uh, gross up uh, from, from a starting point of zero. Uh, but generally speaking, the wrong answer is buying it all right away uh, or, or trying to time markets uh, from a phase transition perspective. Uh, so you know you don't want your allocation process um, from going from zero to, to, to being allocated uh, to be overly impacted uh, by, you know, your expectations or mine or anyone else's expectations of future market dynamics. I think the best process, generally speaking, this is what they're doing in institutional investor land, is just using the calendar as an opportunity uh, to be systematic about uh, purchases. Um, obviously, you can speed up those purchases when you're getting oversold signals uh, in those assets. Um, you know, so if you're going to buy, I don't know, one unit uh, of, 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 of the of ticker, Let's just you know use basic um, basic um, nomenclature. If you buy one unit per ticker every week, you know the, the the ticker is now oversold. You can maybe think about buying a unit and a half that particular week, or maybe even two units and speed up that 
uh, dollar cost averaging process. So generally speaking, you know, you can probably if you're, you're going from zero to fully invested in any type of portfolio, you're probably going to want to do that over at least a one month uh, time horizon just to give yourself the best opportunity to be opportunistic when things are oversold. Uh, and if things aren't oversold, just again, use that calendar uh, as a, you know, on a weekly basis to, uh, to, to build those positions. So that's how we think about doing it. Uh, we also have a, 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 a reply from a, a client who's uh, thinking about uh, covered uh, put writing uh, as well. That's something that can, you know, help take you into a position. So, uh, you know, we have a bevy of thoughtful investors, thousands of investors all around the world, uh, different levels of sophistication. You know, some, you know, half of, roughly half of you guys are professional investors. The other half are retail investors. And the best thing I think about, uh, the best thing I think we've created uh, in terms of a 42 macro uh, is this community where all of you guys are training and teaching and helping each other uh, learn and become better investors, better people, uh, generally speaking. So uh, we just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for the kindest, wonderful, most awesome uh, learning, safest learning environment in, in um, across global Wall Street. Uh, and we just want to say thank you for everyone who participates in that. So we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Derry Stell presenting our Macro Minute for uh, Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. Best of luck out there today. Catch you back here tomorrow.